Our next presenter is Tyler Lund. He's an environmental studies uh, major and a double minor in ESRM and education, learning, and society. So he'll be graduating here in a couple weeks as well with department alone. Tyler is a Chick Evans Scholar. I never heard of Chick Evans Scholars before. It's, like it's a golf, golf caddy scholarship. Cool. And he's also the 2017 co-coordinator for Pipeline's Environmental Alternative Spring Break. In addition to being an excellent student, he's also an excellent and amazing artist. And you'll have a chance to see some of his pieces after the symposium out at the Hippie Hangout. He'll have a display out there as well. So be sure to check those out. The title of this presentation is Raising Environmental Awareness in a Digitized World, the Effectiveness of Science-Based Art. He worked with the Center for Creative Conservation here at the University of Washington, the site supervisor, Sarah Breslin, who I believe is in the audience. She's in the back. And her faculty advisor was our very own Christy Strauss. So with that, I'll turn it over to Tim. Thank you, Tisha, for the introduction. The artificial illumination of the Earth is a visual indicator that humans are impacting our environments at an unprecedented scale. Despite a digitized world where access to scientific information is at our fingertips, the public at large is still relatively misinformed about the epidemic of environmental issues. Take climate change, where studies from Yale determined that only 50% of Americans believe in anthropogenic-induced climate change. Those aren't great odds. And if we got senators throwing snowballs, we know we have a gap in community <laughs> science uh, into public discourse. And so one way that people have been trying to bridge this divide between science and adequately informing the public is a new mode of communication where science meets art, also coined sci-art. And to investigate this field, I wondered, is SAR an effective medium to raise environmental awareness? How is it currently being integrated into a modern context? And why is it worth pursuing? And what are the implications of this method in fostering a more environmentally conscious society? So under the advisement of the Center for Creative Conservation, I operated on two separate tracks. On the right, I conducted a qualitative data analysis of three SAR case studies, which I followed over the last few months. And on the left, I developed my own project called uh, Mines Meadow Beauty Beyond, Beauty Beyond Suppression. <coughs> so we've been trying to use science to inform policy and change people's behaviors. But conditions of our current throwaway consumer culture reflect that that's not happening as effectively as we need it to. It seems that the um, science and facts do not translate into cultural convictions. And in our realm, higher educational institutions are in this cycle of grants and research publications where we're often disciplined to act inhuman in order to be objective. But where does that fit in with connecting with people? And to examine this claim, while abroad, I made observations at three universities to try to scale how well integrated arts were with the sciences. And I determined that both areas needed rooms for improvement, as all the students agreed and wanted to see more interdisciplinary work offered. And so to contrast science, art has been a method of communication since our ancestors could draw on rocks. But the most common response to a lot of art is, I don't get it, um, which means it's maybe missing the more literary devices. And so if neither uh, science or art in itself works at communicating ideas, uh, for the past few months, I was looking into cyber. I followed Chris Jordan's work uh, on Albatross, um, a cyber magazine uh, called Current Conservation, and a new model of sustainability that works with cultural institutions called Planet Vision. And this is where I took, uh, made transcripts that embodied their work, and then coded themes to understand their rhetoric and motivations within the field. And a lot of my work all sort of circumvented back to one central idea, that their main effort was to restore a connection back to people. They all theorized that what's essentially at stake is the uh, moral and existential questions of our own humanity. So in an internet-driven world, we can be more often than not, we're constantly overstimulated by information rather than it being informative. Um, um, it shows that it's not simply a science deficiency model. Instead, all the information in the world doesn't really matter if we cannot fix a polarized society. So what SciArt does effectively is break down these echo chambers by embedding itself into multiple contexts and platforms, sort of like Chris Jordan's work on Albatross. Uh, through this way, um, visual artists are becoming the next line of environmental educators. So in conclusion, we cannot silo academics and science any longer. 
we require this cultural component coming from art in order to bring a humanness to science. And I try to represent this a lot in my own side artwork. Um, my medium was superimposed line art uh, to contrast the objectivity of the photography and the subjectivity of environmental themes I sought to illustrate. Um, my, uh, in, uh, 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 my pieces allude to this disassociation of pace and relativity from the scale of environmental issues that occur uh, and the uh, experiences that we have in our daily lives. And this modern disassociation is one of the reasons why we continue to perpetuate unsustainable behaviors, uh, even though it contradicts our moral obligations. So there's a responsibility in all of us to collaborate and bring a humanness back to science uh, in order to develop a more environmentally conscious society. So I want to thank my site's supervisor, uh, Sarah Breslow from the Center for Creative Conservation, uh, Chrissy Strauss, my faculty advisor, um, my study abroad programs so I was on in India and China, and uh, everyone else, the whole crew, family, friends, partner, dog. Love all you guys. I appreciate everyone. Thank you so much.